Welcome everybody to Funeral Nation episode 129. I'm Ryan Thogmartin. That is Jeff, the Funeral Commander Harbison. And uh, this is the best effing web show on the In the effing world. business, the funeral go. business. You're exactly right. So we uh, we both have landed. Um, last week you were in Kentucky. I uh, went down to Atlanta. The devil went down to Georgia and back <laughs> all in a week. I think this is the first week in some time where we're both uh, centrally located yeah. back in our offices. And again, it starts next week with me. So uh, anyway, we uh, get to be out and about the business and listen and talk to a lot of people listening. We'll talk about that more shortly. But uh, Ryan, who powers this thing called Funeral Nation? CNJ Financial and Jamie and their crew. They had a big rivalry weekend last week in LSU, Alabama. So if you haven't checked out uh, some of the stuff they're doing on Facebook and Jamie just got tormented in his office, but uh, let's run that promo. What payment method do you prefer families use for your goods and services? Most funeral homes and cemeteries prefer cash check or credit card over life insurance as the preferred method of payment. However, families who use life insurance are able to purchase the funeral service of their choice and spend 31% more on your goods and services. By encouraging more families to pay with insurance, you can create a better experience for the family and become more profitable without increasing your call volume. The reason most firms prefer cash check or credit card over life insurance is that insurance companies are a hassle to deal with and payment can often take weeks or months to receive. With CJ Financial, you can receive funding within 24 hours of verification of benefit, thereby eliminating the hassle, headache, and cash flow delay in processing insurance death claims. Let us show you why hundreds of funeral homes all across America choose CJ for their assignment funding needs, and why many associations, accounting firms, and industry leaders recommend CJ to their clients and members. You know, Jamie is one of my favorite human beings on the planet. You know, he posts <coughs> in, uh, in the mornings with his fam family, his boys going to school on Mondays and motivation. And uh, I actually pulled for him this weekend because I wanted to see the elation, but it just didn't happen. But uh, either way, keep going. Uh, it's called college football, Jamie. Uh, we <laughs> love you anyway. So, Ryan, uh you know, last week we talked about some rumor stuff that still hasn't been revealed because nobody wants to talk about it or admit what exactly what's going on. So we're going to right. keep that perpetuating. Um, but the only thing that's really big in the news that's really, frankly, un unfortunate is this situation up in Detroit. Yeah, it's it's you know it's it's been terrible. Uh, it's it's really a bl another black eye for the profession, and and where one bad apple starts to spoil the bunch. Uh, we've got a couple clients in Detroit metro area where we've spent a lot of time with them um, around you know how to address this in their community because they are getting questions on social media and being able to make sure that every funeral director knows what to say, how to say it, um, and actually our client brought in some media relation professionals that, that walk through step-by-step step, like kind of damage control before, you know, it's not their funeral home, but how do they handle the, the downfall from all of the conversation? And I don't think we've gotten to the bottom of it yet either, which is uh, really, really sad. Yeah. And it's just unusual that it's spread and it's at this point inside that city. Uh, and unfortunately, from a consumer standpoint, when you see that, it puts something in the back of their mind. Is yeah. this a common practice? Not common practice. Is this practice that unusual? Yeah. You know, so, it, it definitely creates distrust. And, you know, I, I think there's ways that firms can um, talk about what's happening in Detroit and, you know, assure their community that, that, you know, the steps they're taking to make sure that that is not the case at their funeral home. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's pretty touchy. It's, it's hard to talk about it because it is such a tragic thing. Right. And I, I, I think that the firms that are responding to assist to sort this out, you know, kudos to those folks yeah. too, because they're showing what funeral service really is all about. So our That's hats right. off to those guys. Um, we have a new sponsor on board, uh, with tentacles that go deep yeah. in the funeral business. Um, 
Kraken, welcome aboard. We're excited to have them. I'm a personal huge fan. Uh, I've seen the product. Uh, I like it. Uh, it's more than just capturing data. It's helping you run your business, thus right. the tentacles. So uh, let's run their first promotion about their business. Shopping lists, to-do lists, a list of people to call. These are ways that many of us stay organized. Funeral homes use lists too. Your most important list, your whiteboard. For today's pace of business, a whiteboard has several shortcomings. It can't be updated from home, on the road, or anywhere else for that matter. The only way to update your team is to come to the office or to take a photo and send it. Is your whiteboard really helping you improve how you manage your work? Or are you really just chained to your whiteboard? Today, there's a better way, and that's Kraken. Kraken offers real-time digital whiteboards that allow you to keep all your cases fully up-to-date and synced across your team and your locations. You can easily sort and search specific information in the moment right when you need it. And you can minimize errors, redundancies, and inefficiencies. It's a simple tool that improves communication and productivity and frees up more time for everyone. Today, the best way to get organized at home, at work, at play, and on the road is not to get a bigger whiteboard, but it's to choose the right technology to help you stay organized. Tips like these can free up your time so you can spend more time with your families. Learn more about Kraken's productivity and efficiency tools at kraken.net. How will you spend the time you save? Let's get Kraken. Very cool. Very cool. Glad to have Kraken on board the Effin show. So thank you, Kraken. Uh, and John's been a John's been a guest on the show. I don't know what episode. It was 100 and something. Yeah. Yeah, I remember having John on here. And so uh, if the word is now, you better get Kraken if you don't uh -oh. have it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look at and you. There you have it. Hey, so uh, I'm excited today. We have a great guest on here that talking about the positive light of our business. Um, he's a he's a sunbeam about that. So uh, let's go ahead and run our interview with the one and only Joe Prey. Joe Prey, welcome to the Funeral Nation show. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, before we get started, how about introduce yourself uh, to the Funeral Nation and let us know where you're uh, operating out of, uh, a little bit about your professional uh, tenure in our business. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, well, let's see, one, two, three, fifth generation funeral director, no, fourth generation funeral director in, uh, in a little town in Charlotte, Michigan, about 8,800 people, 20 miles southwest of the capital of Lansing, uh, Michigan's capital. Uh, my family, my Father, my grandfather and my great grandfather started in uh, 1923, or shortly before that, when they took over a furniture and undertaking business downtown uh, at the owner's request. Uh, now I work with my father and my son, which is pretty cool. We're all Very named cool. Joe, so I'm uh, <laughs> referred to as Joey. <laughs> Joey. He's old, I'm still Joey, and I don't mind that a bit. Um, our firm has kind of grown to have a reputation of um, compassionate but creative services here in the funeral business, uh, here in our, our community as well. Um, we've, uh, I think we may be the only funeral home that's won the uh, ICCFA KIP or Keeping a Personal Award four times. Very cool. Um, and we're a Pursuit of Excellence uh, Award winner for uh, National Funeral Directors, probably almost 30 times, 30 years or so. Awesome. Wow. Pretty fantastic. So, well, Joe, we're, we're having you on the show today because of your continually thinking outside of the box and the way that you engage your community in, in different things. So uh, you are going to be doing something with a Cirque Soleil show. Is that correct? We are. Uh, got one of the posters here behind me for Corteo. It's a Cirque du Soleil show. When I saw that, I don't know if and how many of the readers are familiar with Cirque du Soleil. I've got a few notes to keep myself on track here. But when I got the email and said, oh, we're announcing a new show that's coming to Detroit, which is an hour and a half from us down the road. And I read about it and it says it's Corteo. Well, Corteo, I thought, I've heard that word before. It's Italian for Cortez. Excuse me if I put my glasses on. I want to read it so I don't get too far off. And it is 
it's really quite interesting because it says cortege in Italian means procession. Procession to most of us with cortege is a funeral procession. That piqued my interest. And I went on to read that it's a joyous procession, a festive parade imagined by a clown. The clown pictures his own funeral taking place in a carnival atmosphere. What it is is Mauro, the dreamer clown here in the middle, imagines what his friends and family, his co-clowns would say and do about him. And so the whole thing goes on to basically, um, he pictures his own funeral taking place in that carnival atmosphere, shows the highlights and strength and all the different things about, about uh, Mauro the clown. There's even one, um, there's even a couple of the characters in there as I read through their press kit that uh, Mr. Loyal, the Whistler and the White Clown who actually seemed to fulfill the uh, role of a funeral director in this whole thing, which is pretty cool. Sure. So, so Joe, uh, share with us how you're going to, uh, or how you are making this show nearby available in the spotlight within your community. Well, like I said, when we saw it, we thought, boom, light bulbs went off and we said, uh, that's a funeral on stage. We've actually done a couple of funerals on stage in some of the performing arts centers around here, which were a bit over the top. Uh, and I thought when I saw the promos and I've seen the things in the show, I thought, well, those, we've used a lot of Cirque du Soleil elements in funerals we've done. I don't have the trapeze artist. Although maybe on our edition, we can swing that, you know? I'm not sure. But what it told me was the funeral tells the life of the story. That's what the show does. Funeral draws people together to celebrate that life. That's what a funeral does. We do that all the time. The actions show how the deceased will live on in others. That's what we need to do. That helps the family smile again. That's what my whole business is about. That's what all my colleagues, at least most of my colleagues eat that. And this shows how the funeral can be transformational. The other thing that it relates to is uh, 2012, I think it was the Olson Zaltman study on funeral service was put together or commissioned by the Funeral Service Education Foundation. That said that a lot of our people traditionally haven't felt at this point that funerals were meeting their needs. They wanted to be more transformational. They wanted to be more about me. They wanted to be kind of a crowning performance and they wanted to show how the journey of that person has ended, but the memories and the things that people have learned from that will carry on and live on in everybody else. So that's, that's where we saw that. And so we said, how the heck are we gonna do that? We decided, well, let's take people to the show. Let's take people to Corteo. Let's do a little homework beforehand and educate them on the similarities between the stuff that we do and some of my, many of my colleagues do and what's happening on stage. People are paying big money to go see this. I mean, sure. generally expensive, but can you imagine putting something like that on? <laughs> well, uh, knowing you that I see this in the future for somebody, perhaps someone that's taking this trip with you. However, sure. you know, there's another element to this because it sounds like the character in this event is basically pre-planning. This is what I want. This yeah. is what it could look that's like. Right. Yeah. You know, so uh, I think that's phenomenal because uh, no one can tell our own story better than we can. That's exactly right. And this gives us a creative way to do that, to reach people. We're going to run a contest. We're going to be entered to the contest. It's going to be a very either short or lengthy essay. It's going to be, how are you going to celebrate or how would you celebrate the life of a friend or family or even yourself? What would you suggest? What would you put in there? What's the cool stuff you'd put in there? And it dovetails right along with NFDA's Talk of a Lifetime program. It dovetails with uh, Matthew's Aurora Be Remembered program. And it dovetails with uh, One Iron Productions' um, How Will You Be Remembered program. We've used elements of all of those programs quite successfully in our local area. And we're, we're excited to see this. We're going to take, we've got students that are going to be involved. We've got the public's going to be involved. We're going to take them down on the bus. We're going to talk a little bit about it. It's going to be a blast. Well, Joe, it's uh, the reason we wanted to have you here, A, is uh, you're a leader in our business and you have a voice. Okay. And this is just another example of why I think funeral service is getting better. Oh, it's yeah. not because what we're doing is because perhaps we're listening a little bit more than we okay. did in the past. 
My hope is that uh, some of my colleagues, and I've talked to a couple of them on the phone over the last three, four weeks since we since this thing started percolating around in my brain. We talked to a number of them, and I think there's a few other people that can replicate this around the country in their own communities. I certainly hope that's the case because this is such a huge thing. It didn't come out of funeral service. It came out of the entertainment industry. Yeah. We can use that because if it's in the entertainment industry, it often becomes mainstream. That's right. So we're just hoping to capitalize on it. It's going to be a blast. Right. And it's one of the uh, the positive is is positive news and thoughts about our business versus oh, yeah. uh, the negative we yeah. fight all the time. Oh, but yeah. Joe, thank cool. you, uh, thank you for taking some time and coming on here and sharing this with us. Um, when we hear good news like this and thoughtful ideas and thought leaders, we certainly want to have them here. And you're always the best dressed guy in the room. Um, and so uh, we appreciate you having, uh, having or allowing us to have you on here. In addition, thank you for being a leader in our business because you set a great example. Well, I guess I'm a leader, but it's more like this makes my job fun. There you go. And, you know, people talk about fun and funerals, whatever. You know, we try not to go over the top. But truly, we've had a lot of services where we put our heart into it. We pulled a lot of the cool stuff together about the people. And when the families walk out, they say, wow, that was wonderful. Wow, that was great. And it's really cool to hear that. Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll send you off back to work up there in the uh, bright lands. And uh, we look forward to hearing the results and uh, certainly um, find out a little bit more about uh, the folks and their comments and maybe what this particular um, initiative you took turned out for someone else later on. It'll be interesting to see. I'll keep you posted for sure. You'll hear about it. All right. All right. Thanks, well, thanks Joe. a lot. And, uh, say hey to your family up there. Sure will. See you. All right. Take yeah. care. You know, Joe's an amazing, amazing funeral director. He's super creative. Uh, Joe's been a, a client of Disrupt for about four years and you know, it's really cool. Every time I get to get on the phone with them and just start talking strategy, the ideas that he's coming up with and just taking an initiative like this has been months in the in the planning and in the making of, of this event and how to incorporate his community and, and just really get consumers to think outside the box when it comes to funeral. And Jeff, you had sent me some photos uh, that we want to show and we'll put those up right now of the funeral home and eat. Unimclaw, is that Unimclaw. The, uh, okay. South? I can butcher that. They're up in Washington. And uh, our, our fan, one of our big effing fans, Katie Houston, sent this to us. She was on the show not long ago. And they have a Halloween setup and, and a, a, basically a program at their funeral home. Here's another great way for them to reach out, connect to the community. And this just isn't something that's kind of set up in half wit done look at the crowds there yeah it's amazing and they're they're engaging around just a real time everybody's doing it how can a funeral home be normal how can a funeral home engage with the community in a way that is acceptable outside of a death you know it's and then, and then what, what's really cool is they didn't go the easy route by having a creepy really ghoul ghost filled weird coffin like display they just engaged around fun good stuff like normal people yeah it, it was a fun theme you know it, it looked a little tropical cavemanish uh <laughs> but the, the owner everybody was involved there you know yeah. russ weeks and his family i mean how smart and guess what general directors this is what you need to do maybe let's talk a little less and listen a little bit more that's right just like we heard from joe and now we see from the week's folks up there. Great job, y'all. Yeah, the consumers are telling us which way they want us to go. We just got to listen and, and get there uh, because they're the ones driving the conversation. But a lot of us just have earplugs in. Yeah. Speaking of driving conversation and listening, uh, you've got something to say about one of our sponsors. Yeah, Sitch Casket, changing the game. They have a simple, simple message. Quality caskets at an affordable price. Doesn't get much simpler than that. Let's roll that promo. All right, Commander. Well, this wraps up 
another episode, episode 129. Uh, next week we'll be on episode 130 because 30 comes after 29. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. We're just making noise and hopefully we're dragging some people along with us who, who want to change and push forward. And no doubt. Uh, it, it, in my view, what we're seeing is, is a piece of how it's continuing to evolve. Uh, our job is to provide information so that our funeral nation can see what's going on in the positive light. So again, folks like Joe, folks like the Weeks, send it to us. You know what? We want to talk about the good things you're doing in our community, certainly to negate the stuff from those who don't. Uh, we're basically deviants in our business that are leading the charge with the headlines. We know Absolutely. better. Absolutely. So, okay, Commander. Well, we have no idea what's going to happen next week because uh, you're going to be traveling. I'll be traveling a couple days. So we could be in different parts of the world. We could be in the same town. We could be in our offices. We'll find out. So tune in and play Where in the World is Jeff and Ryan. Same bat time, same bat place. That's right. Okay. Until next time, have a great effing week. Out here.